Hi, uh, this series is going to document progress on a game I'm building that will teach electronics, and while the first thing that comes to mind is probably games like this, I'm aiming more for something like a Zelda game, but instead of sliding block puzzles and tools that let you interact with the world in interesting ways, puzzles are based on electronics and using tools that interact with the world in interesting ways. My point is, teaching electronics is the reason this game exists, but I'm going to try everything I can to make sure the player believes that it isn't. So, there's an actual plot. It'll be possible for this educational game to have spoilers. There's also a lot of optional content that's just there for fun, and electronics will have an in-world reason to exist. Uh, so far, I've been working on this for about a year, and started developing full-time this January, and as you can see from my test scene, I have not been focusing on the art. I've been working on the boring stuff, like building an analog circuit simulator and the mesh that displays it. Now that it's done, for the most part, I can start working on more visually interesting stuff. And for those of you wondering why I built my own circuit simulator instead of using an existing one, it's because I like my frame rates in the double digits. Oh, and before anyone asks, this is being built in Unity with all of these programs, which are all free. Also, I'm solo developing this. Uh, so let me show you what I've built. This is an analog circuit, and they are terrible, on my end anyway. I don't like coding these things. In-game, they're pretty interesting, though. Uh, they show current with the speed of this electron texture and voltage with the tile's height. So let me give you an example. Uh, this is a puzzle from near the end of the tutorial area. Here, a battery raises the floor up, then it drops at each resistor until it reaches ground. To get through this, the player would go into circuit mode and add a few resistors to make stairs. Most of the game will be like this, where you don't need any math, you just need to know what a resistor does, and that high resistance means higher voltage drop. I do have this menu for editing component values, but the player doesn't need it for the first few hours. They just drop components and the default resistance or capacitance or whatever will just work to solve the puzzle. I am really trying to make this novice friendly. The game's most mathematically challenging parts should only require a vague understanding of algebra, and I have a few hours to get the player ready for that. Most of the introductory puzzles are built like this, a Zelda-style dungeon where you just need to change parts of the room to get to the door. Get there however you can. And to do that, the player has three core moves. The first is a dash, or jump if they're close to an edge. This gets swapped for an air dash if they're in the air, or a wall jump, both of which are single use, so you can't just jump around every puzzle. The second is circuit mode, which is a top-down edit mode used for when the player needs to build or heavily modify a circuit. I tried to make this as quick to use as possible without making it feel like a piece of CAD software. I admit it gets a little complicated to use, but I won't know how much of a problem it is until I start testing, which I can't do until there's a tutorial. And finally, toggling gates, which inverts the output of the gate the player is standing on. At the moment, I don't have an implementation of this for analog circuits because I haven't played with them enough to know what tool will be most useful, but it's probably toggling wires on and off. At the moment, these are the player's only core abilities, and are the only ones any puzzle can actually require. There will be a lot of optional abilities, but they just make puzzle solving or traversing the areas easier. I mentioned gates a moment ago, which brings me to the fact that this game contains analog and logic circuits, and I actually find the logic ones much more interesting, because the not gate ability lets players interact with the circuit during normal gameplay. Uh, this starts out as just convenient, but late in the game, I can force players to flip gates to get a certain output while dealing with other game mechanics. I'm really trying to avoid putting standard combat in the game, because it would be a little out of place and would end up just being filler, as it is in many games, but fending off enemies while rewiring an elevator control panel would be a good example of what I'm going for with this. Which vaguely brings me to some actual game development advice. Always implement slow motion. It makes debugging so much easier when you can see an action happen at 1% speed. Also, accidentally tying something's speed to frame rate is a common problem in games, and one you will very quickly notice if something still runs at normal speed when you have slow motion on. And of course, you can always leave slow motion available to players as a difficulty setting. Uh, this is something I actually plan to do, so if the player, in my example from earlier, is having trouble juggling, rewiring a circuit, and fighting off enemies, they can just slow the game down. This removes the skill element of the challenge, which is the part I don't care if they cheat around, while still confronting the player with the same strategy challenge, both of solving the circuit and fending off opponents. So the difficulty change doesn't affect the thing I actually want them to learn. Finally, in Unity at least, Speed control isn't very difficult to implement, so I fully recommend it, though it would probably be a nightmare to try to add latent development. 
Uh, final note, when getting the player input, use time.unscaledDeltaTime or the player's inputs will be slowed along with everything else. Getting back to logic circuits, they can control things, basically turning them into an overcomplicated flip switch open door system at the start, but later on, the player will have to automate things and build their own control logic to solve puzzles. For example, I have this section where players can rotate and raise this platform. It's pretty much a standard elevator puzzle, but later on, they'll be able to move the platform, rotate it, drop it on another spindle, and move the thing all around the dungeon, even flipping it to access different gravities. Also, this game has gravity shifting. I added it out of laziness, I'll explain why in some later video. Anyway, I want these logic puzzles to build up to a point where the game can ask players to build significant parts of a basic computer. Something I've actually already done, which leads me to my biggest current problem of the month, wire management. This is a mess. The problem is, any solution I can think of adds complexity. Currently you click to add gates, click and drag between gates to add wires. The logic circuit save file reflects this, with gates stored as a series of types and locations where wires are just connect gate 1 terminal 1 to gate 2 terminal 0 wire color of 1 1. Simple. Any system letting the player manually choose where wires would go adds a lot of complexity not only to drawing wires, but moving wires when a gate is moved and recording all of this in the save file. I think the correct solution is to write some logic system that checks if wires are overlapping and moving them, but that will get really complicated and the cascade of moving wires off one wire and onto another could cause massive problems and take things from messy to unpredictable and messy. And existing logic simulators are no help, since this one keeps things readable by using splines instead of straight wires, which I can't do unless I want the vertex count to get ridiculous. And in these two, all wires are drawn on a grid, which doesn't help because they both look less readable than what I currently have. I, I don't know, it's not that important, the only problem is, when I do solve this problem, it may change the format of the save file, and then I'll have to convert over everything I've built at that point, so the longer I wait, the worse it'll be. Anyway, future videos will go over technical problems like this that I've solved over the last year, like how I built the display mesh for the circuits or how gravity shifting works, along with whatever I've worked on since the last video, which could be anything from texturing to writing the soundtrack. I hope you found this interesting, I'm going to try to upload something once a month, and if people are actually watching these, maybe more.